I've lived in Alaska 10 years, but I've never gone for that coveted seaplane rating. Now I'm going to throw myself a flight instructor back into the flight training environment as a student pilot. It's time to become a commercial seaplane pilot, so come follow along. Summer is in full bloom here in the foothills of Denali. Talkeetna is home to Alaska Floats and Skis, a place I'm familiar with as an instructor. This is where I bring my flight school students for their check rides all year long. But now I'm the student pursuing a rating that all Alaskan pilots should have, the seaplane rating. Now you're going to recognize my instructor. Her name is Sarah and she flew with Josh Flowers from Aviation 101 here at Alaska Floats while he and I were collaborating on his Alaska series a few years back. I worked behind the scenes, filmed, and even ran the drone for his popular video with Sarah and Alaska Floats. But now I'm in the hot seat, once again a student, and ready to take this head on. So before we go down to the plane, and like during this ground, I am watching the winds the whole time. And that's something that when you start flying floats, you just, it becomes ingrained that you're just always watching the wind. We don't have like, obviously, formal weather reporting out here. We have Talkeetna, but oftentimes the weather is kind of delayed from there and the weather can be different here too, like mm -hmm. the winds in particular. Yeah. So that's something that like, before you even go down to the plane, that's kind of your first like pre-flight item is where are the winds coming from. Planes when you're idle taxiing, you'd want the stick all the way back in your chest. But this and one. In this one, it doesn't do anything. Uh, the okay. reason you do that is to try to keep the, no the nose up out of the water, try okay. to reduce the amount of prop erosion. In this plane, it's so short, the tail's so short, it doesn't do anything. Okay. So when we go out, we'll be at an idle taxi. It's below a thousand RPM. Okay. That's my pet peeve. Idle taxis below a thousand. When people are used to land planes, they feel like the idle taxi's taking forever and they just slowly start creeping in on the throttle. But all that's doing is just digging the heels in more, creating more drag, okay. throwing more water through the prop, and not actually making you go that much faster. Okay. So if we had any significant wind, um, we would do our run up into the wind to try to reduce the amount of water going into the prop. Since we don't have any wind, we're just gonna go straight ahead. Okay. So when we do our run up, I'm gonna bring the mixture a little bit more. Then you're gonna bring the yoke all the way back. Okay. Bring it up to 1500, just going right straight ahead. Yep. We won't get going that fast, because remember, we're just digging our heels in. So we're Check adding. the mags. Yep. There's a drop, that looks good. Pack the bowls. There's a right mag, like the bull. And car beat, like car beat. Cool. And then back to idle. Cool. So here at our idle attitude, this is idle or displacement taxi. If you come in and land this flat, this is not good. This is not where you want to be on touchdown. Okay. So go ahead and bring it back up to your run up speed, back up to 1500. Yoke all the way back like you have it. All right, 1500. And then look at the sight picture and just let this kind of focus in for a bit. Okay. Whatever that looks like to you, you're sitting a I little bit higher it. than me. Okay. All right, go ahead and bring it back to idle. Talking airport information, Delta, um, one nine or zero zero Zulu, wind two six zero at five, weather better than five thousand five, temperature one four, dew point five, altimeter two nine or seven seven. 
Tiger Drone Way. One nine. Pull left over right. the okay. Spin around. Okay. Okay. Our mountain observation. Pilot weather reports requested. Contact Tau Keetner Radio on one two three point six four. Traffic advisory. Advise on initial contact. You have Delta. So we're going to start off with our step taxi going the other direction. Okay. And the reason we start with a step taxi before we do um, an actual takeoff is because the process is very similar. You get a non-step. The last things you're going to do in this turn are going to be bringing the water rudders up. So you're going to start the turn right about here, water rudders up, hook them on the dash, yoke's coming all the way back, and then you're bringing it full power. And when you bring it full power, you'll get the first rise of the nose. About three to four seconds later, you'll get the second rise. And that second rise indicates to you that you can release the back pressure and let the nose come down. Okay. So go through our before takeoff checklist while we're just holding short yeah, here. Yeah, so now. trim, we did trim, mixture is full rich, RP is full, uh, gas is on both, flaps are up, we want one notch, right? Uh, right. Not for step taxi, we'll just leave it okay. for step taxi. Bit and water rudder. The water rudder's to go. So on this next spin, when we get right about here, this is when we'll be going right full now? power. Not on the next okay. spin. So on the next spin around, when we get kind of 180 degrees away, that's when we'll start to bring the water rudders up. Okay. And remember, we're get, bringing the yoke all the way back, full power. You'll see the first rise, second rise, let the nose come down, and then reduce it back to about 2,000 RPM. Okay. And then we'll just be planing on top of the water. We'll see if I remember all that. All right. <laughs> right about here, water rudders coming up. Uh, that's why you say to grab it. Yeah. Go ahead and do another spin. Go ahead and bring okay. it back down. And we'll do another spin. <laughs> it was really easy to fumble with those. And you saw we were still spinning even though they were pretty much up. So go ahead right about here. Go ahead and start the process. Yeah. There we go. So those are up, untangled with the yoke, or with the throttle. Yoke's all the way back. And we're getting ready to bring it full power. Right about here, slowly bringing it full power. There's your first rise. Second That's rise. the second. Let the nose come down. Be nice and patient. Okay. There we can start to see other trees, a little bit of back pressure, and now reduce the power. You saw it just for like a second. You saw a little bit of poor Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So that was just you were bringing the nose down a little bit too much. This okay. is perfect though. So go ahead, and I want you to push forward on the yoke right now. Go okay. ahead and let the nose come down. You gotta, gotta push, push a little bit more. See, okay. There's your porpoising, it's gonna okay. slowly get worse. And then back. just a little bit of back pressure stops okay. it. Go cool. ahead and bring in a bit more power. In a bit more power, okay. Yeah. See how the nose is just slowly and creeping turn up? And left. Yeah, go ahead. Nice, gentle left turn. When the nose starts to slowly creep up, that means you're falling off step and you're not going fast enough. This okay. looks about good here, but that's what that's telling you. If you suddenly all you can see is sky, that okay. means you're not going fast enough. Go ahead and throttle all the way back to idle, yoke all the way back. You'll feel it kind of slide off step. And then once you've settled back onto the water, water rudder's coming down. I feel like this water rudder is going to be my hardest part. <laughs> Good afternoon, Tokyo Radio Footplane 7347 Delta. Taxiing Christensen Lake will be taken off to the north, departing to the northwest with Delta. So before takeoff checklist, right? Yep, before takeoff checklist. So trim is good, we didn't mess with it. Nope. Mixture is full rich, car peat's cold, gas is on both flaps. We want one notch? Yep, one notch of flap. Okay, one notch. And then on the next turn, we'll go ahead and get ready to take off. So we taxied in right to the middle of that channel. When we go out, we'll be going right to the middle of the channel, but you'll be trying to get on step during that, so your visibility won't be super good. Okay. Um, but you can look out the side, on your side. I'll be looking out my side, making sure we stay right in the middle. Um, it's about two feet of depth through that channel at the shallowest part, which okay. we only need about six inches when we're on step, a foot when we're idle taxiing. Water rudder? Water rudder coming up. Yokes all the way back, and then right about here, bringing it full power. There's your first rise. First rise. Second rise. Let the nose come down, nice and patient. 
And then right there is going to be your takeoff attitude. So okay. now don't let the nose dip anymore. Start feeding it a little bit of back pressure to keep okay. the nose right there. And then you're just waiting to pick up enough speed to lift off right there. And then pitch it for 80. Perfect, just like that. Coming around this corner, we're going to be aiming for the lowest part of the terrain, that little saddle right in front of us. Okay. Clean up. Wow. So you're going to wait until we're clear of the obstacles on the far end. Okay. So once we're up and over those trees, got it. Once we're up and over the trees, then we can go ahead and clean up. Okay. Then climbing out right at 80. Right about here, we can go ahead and bring the flaps out. Once we get, we're going to fly over that river there, that's the Talkeetna River. Roger. So you can go ahead and start turning left, making sure we're extra vigilant for traffic. Off Christensen Lake, it's time to head to the world's prettiest practice area and playground, in style. This is fun! Finally, we're in the air! <laughs> yep. <laughs> Evaluating your landing environment is key as a seaplane pilot. That's why Sarah has me working on the woods checklist really early. And then, so it's this lake that we're over, the, the circular one in the middle, and then the long skinny one at, at the start. The start in the back of your mind, now start thinking about which one you would prefer to land on and why. Most of the time the winds do not look like that. So the thing is, is that people see that diagram and they're like, all right, I look for the glassy portion, that's where the winds are coming from. And then we go out to our lake and it looks a lot more like this. There's a big glassy portion here and then like ripples here. And then this whole middle section is glassy and then there's ripples here. Mm -hmm. That is much, much more common to get around Talkeetna at least, um, the lakes we go to. And then people are overflying it. They see this glassy portion and they're like, all right, the winds are coming this way. So is that because there's like winds going through terrain somewhere here? Or? It could be terrain for sure. Um, usually it just means that the winds are light and variable. Okay. So they're maybe coming from this direction and they maybe hit the water and then they kind of just die out. Mm -hmm. And then for hmm. whatever reason, they pick up again. Or maybe these winds go a different direction. Sure. Um, it's just much, much more likely to get light and variable winds here. Okay. I think the middle one's too short for distance. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, but uh, I still think the wind's coming from this way. Yeah. But do you disagree? Um, I agree, but the winds are shifting a lot on the water. There's little different like pockets of wind sure. in different directions. Yeah, yeah, but the predominant yeah. this direction. Yeah. Although, I mean, this is such an interesting day, because it's, it's mostly glassy, and I was about to launch into that, about um, if your lake is like this, where it's like 50% glassy and a little bit of ripple, you don't want to try to mess with that. You're just going to end up doing glassy water landings. Okay. So when in doubt, if you have any doubt about the surface of the water, being unable to see that or anything, you're going to end up doing a glassy water landing. Okay. And we're going to be um, landing this way, landing um, okay. to the south. The reason we're going to be doing that is we predominantly got calm winds with little bits of like movement. So when we're looking at the terrain for a glassy water landing, we want to have an approach that's going to be coming in over the lowest terrain. Because glassy water technique is not necessarily super challenging, but it's very challenging to get it into a, sh a short distance, into a short lake. Okay, so gas, I'm on both. Water rudder is up. Mixture is full rich. Is it full rich or did you yeah, pull it out a little bit? I pulled it out a little bit. You want bit. it there still? Or? Yeah, I want it there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, car Pete, you want a three seconds? Yep. One, a thousand. Two, a thousand. Three, one thousand. And right. flaps. Yep. One notch? One notch, yep. We're one just going to have flaps. one notch this whole time. So no. 80 miles an hour is going to be our speed through this whole pattern. Okay. I'm bringing it back. And so here, we're right about 
a beam where our go around point's gonna be. I, I was thinking that, yeah. that clump of trees. Yeah, exactly. If we're not on the water by then, we'll just go ahead and go around and come back in and try it again. Okay. And then our last visual reference is gonna be our last indication of how high we are above the terrain. Once we're over the water, we, we could touch down at any point. The kind of this marsh that we're beam right now is yeah. going to be our last visual reference. Are we going to land right over the top of it or in the channel there? Uh, we're going to come right over the top of it because we want uh, like terrain. We want grass or something okay. that's going to be really easy to see. If we came in over the channel, that channel could be glassy too. And it could kind of throw up our depth, per depth perception. Okay to turn base here? Yep. Okay. It's important that we're going to try to come in right over this terrain and we're going to start this transition to our landing attitude soon, or like early and then bring it in to about 1900 RPM once that's set. All right, so once we've cleared the trees, go ahead and bring the power back to idle. Bring the nose up to your landing attitude. We're gonna balloon a little bit, which is good, all the way up. Okay. And then power back in now, power real quick. 1900, and then we're just holding our landing attitude all the way down. If we're making any power adjustments for the wind, they're really minor. And we're just being real patient. Real, real patient. And the wind's kind of blowing us around and ballooning us a little bit. Keep the nose up, keep the nose up, right there. All right, touch down, you'll go all the way back. Power all the way back. Awesome! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so talk to me about that landing, what you saw. Uh, yeah, I think I have the, I think I have the attitude pretty good. Um, at least initially, I, I could understand what you were saying when I brought it back down. Yeah. If I needed a little higher, then I need to adjust my memorized sight picture. And anything else we need to do, I don't think so. No, we're just gonna idle taxi back. Um, we were getting close to our go around point uh -huh. when we touched down, so I was about to make that decision. Yeah. But I felt pretty good about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was really and good. And I feel like we came in okay over the terrain. I, I was, I'm a little surprised, like, that you bring it to idle over the terrain like that and then bring the nose up. Like, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think you just fly it on. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting, but now I know. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of weird maneuver. And yeah. So um, so, but that's a, that, is that like the normal landing you were talking about going to idle and then yeah. bringing the nose up? Yeah. So that's what we're doing every time. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So go but in this case, we're adding power. Yeah, we're adding power. So I was going to talk about that. So first of all, uh, the reason we didn't touch down sooner is because we had a little bit of wind ballooning us, which okay. in actual glassy water wouldn't happen, right? You just set the attitude, set the power, and there shouldn't be any wind because glassy water inherently means there's no wind. Today, because it's like half texture and half glassy, that's why we were kind of like battling the winds a little bit. But yeah, so the reason I said in the air, it's the glass water technique's not that challenging. It's challenging getting it into a more confined area. Because basically during that whole transition, you're trying to transition perfectly so that you don't balloon at all. You're basically fighting everything you're doing is like a recipe to get the plane to balloon right. so that's why you're cutting it to idle during that transition because if you have pretty much any power in at all you're just yeah, gonna balloon that's so you, true maybe you, a lot higher yeah so you fight really hard to get down low over the terrain but then if you kind of mess up that that transition you're just gonna balloon and give up all that altitude that you got really low for so that happened to us a little bit you brought the nose up at idle but then the power came in a little bit aggressively and that's okay. when we ballooned a little bit and that also added to why we kind of um, took a little bit longer Went to get lot, down okay. to the water, which isn't bad. That was that was a really good first glassy water. But that's why everything we're doing is trying to get it to not balloon. So that's why we bring it to idle, nose comes up, and then the throttle comes in smoothly and firmly, but not, not quite as aggressive. As soon as you start the turn, you can be starting to bring the water rotors up too. Yep. And that's unique to this plane. We'll talk about that later. Yep. And right about here, I'm going to start adding my power, right? You'll go all the way back. And then, yep, perfect. First rise, second rise. Slowly let the pressure off. Being patient with it. Perfect. Now right about there is your takeoff attitude. Okay. Then be patient. Don't bring them in too early. Be 
Jason and his up right about here. Pop that flapping. Good. Really nice. And then, yeah, whichever low point of the terrain you want to aim for. I like this. I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really do like heading out this way. People don't like to get close to the trees, but we've got a whole other lake right yeah, in front the, of us. Yeah, so. I got the whole length too. Yeah. Whole wing length, width, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Hey y'all, a real quick message here. If you're enjoying this video and doing flight training now or in the near future, check out our online ground school. Pass the written test, prepare for flight training, and become a safe aviator. And you get to support this channel at the same time. Join today at angleofattack.com. All right, back to the video. Sarah suggested I talk more as I'm taking the pacer through its paces. It's something I love my students doing, so I obliged and end up kind of verbalizing what I'm doing a lot more from here on out. So I think I'm at about pattern altitude now. Is that okay? Yep. I'm gonna start drawing the power back. I'm gonna run through my before landing checklist, which is gas is on both, water rudder is up, mixture is where you like it, RP. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. Good there. Flaps. There's my first notch. I'm going to be drawing back my power. I want to get to 80 for my entire approach. This time I'm going to bring my downwind uh, a little bit longer so we can have a longer approach over our final visual point. Is that the correct terminology? Our uh, last visual reference. Last visual reference. So I'll take it out a little bit longer rather than dropping it in. And what have the winds done on our lake since we've been here? Uh, like they look calmer. Yeah, they've been slowly fading away, dying. So we've got pretty much a very much glassy lake now. It's cool, you can see our trail. Yeah, on glassy water, our whole, your, all your ripples will just stay for a long time. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer to, I could maybe start to descend a little bit right here, but. Just a small power reduction. I see my path to where I want to go. Like that lower part of the trees there. Draw my power back a little bit more. Looking out in front of me too for anyone. Just better. This is perfect, yeah. Okay. Bite that thermal, a little less power. Come on. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm coming down through the channel. When I've made the water, that's when I transition. Is that right? Um, you want to be set with your power in and your landing attitude before you lose your last visual reference. Oh, okay. Is the goal. Okay. So, so I'm going to turn to the left a little bit more before I do that. All right. So right about here. Go ahead and start the transition here. So power back all the way. Nose all the nose way Nose all the way up to my landing attitude. And then I'll roll the power in. Beautiful. Right there. And keep that. A little bit more, a little too high. Radio, Super Cruiser, seven miles to the north, inbound with Delta. And then you're just holding it, a little less power. Yep, I'm aching it out, just gradually. You'll go all and the way transition. Back. Beautiful. And southeast in the area. Very nice. My traffic. Cub one, two, Great. three, we're landing. Walk me through that landing. So my landing attitude was too high. A little uh, bit, yeah. But I, I tried to compensate for that with power. I was mushing into it a little bit more than I would have wanted to. So yeah, I just mushed into it a little bit more. But I didn't want to just like draw the power back and let the nose down because we're doing yeah. glassy water. Like I'd rather, I'd rather dig the floats a little bit more and have a softer landing than just I'm down. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that was perfect. That's why I didn't say anything. I'd much rather have you be two nose high. Um, and even if you have a firmer landing, it's much better than being two nose low and trying to, you know, make a softer landing and nose low. Cool. All right. Before we take off, I want to do um, some step turns. Now, oh, step turns, my nemesis. We're going to be on the controls together on the first one, okay. and then we're going to do a big figure eight. So go ahead and flip around, go to the, we're going to go back that way, and I want you to get me on step just like normal, going okay. back towards that direction. Uh, power up for takeoff-ish? Yep. Full power, get the first rise. First rise, second rise, relieving the pressure, gradually 
patiently. And now reduce the power right reduce here. Reduce the power. There's some porpoising. Too much power. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to come to the right. Okay. So, kind of be a little loose around the controls, because I'm going to be on okay. the controls here too. Your controls. All right. My flight controls. We're going to come way Your over controls. towards this shoreline. Your controls. And we're going to make a left turn. My controls. Okay. Alright, so we're right here, right at the edge of where we want to be, 2,000 RPM. We're going to look, clear the turn, turn into it like a car, and then start the turn with the rudders. As soon as we start the turn, we're bringing in a little bit of power. And throughout this whole turn, we're going to be easing just a little small, small amounts of power in through the whole turn. I'm, I'm watching the nose, making sure the nose just tracks straight across the horizon. If that nose was starting to come up a little bit, that would mean that I was be going too slow and starting to fall off step. As I'm straightening out of this turn, I'm coming back on the power. Bring the ailerons back to neutral and back to just above 2,000 to keep us on step. This feels so unnatural. <laughs> All right, your flight controls. My flight controls. You have the controls. We're going to make a right turn, so we're doing a big um, figure eight here. In the bigger part of the water, right? In the bigger part, yeah. I felt I had to fight these step turns, this unnatural feeling that made me feel like we'd catch a float and flip over to the side. Get really right tucked in tight, and okay. yeah, go ahead, start the right turns. So we're clearing it visually, steering like a car, bring that aileron in. A little bit more power as soon as you start the turn. Perfect. This feels so weird. <laughs> and just encouraging it with rudder? Yep. You can bring it in a little tighter. Uh, all right, I, go ahead, kick it straight, go straight to the shoreline, back to idle. You'll go all the way back. So I can do it tighter than that? Yeah. I just feel like I'm gonna flip over. <laughs> yeah, step turns are weird. Okay, so I just need to stop being a wuss. <laughs> no, um, not necessarily. This this end of the lake is a little bit tighter, so I want you to go back in the other direction and do okay. one on that end. Um, but yeah, people tend to get really uncomfortable and it's weird to bring power into a situation that you are already uncomfortable in. But that's the main thing is bringing it's just, power like in. You gotta be comfortable. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's more about the skidding for me. Like yeah. I feel like I'm gonna catch a float and go over. Yeah, no, these are, they've got plenty of room here. The important thing, if you're gonna, uh, you can go ahead and start getting on step. Yeah, that's my plan. Okay, first rise, second rise. Relaxing, er, relaxing. And steering a little bit to the left. Yep. Uh, do you want me to do a left hand or right hand turn? Left turn, so go to the right okay. line. Reduce the power, get yourself slower. So the main thing, if we're going to abort a step turn, you want to kick it straight and go straight before you um, bring it back to idle. You don't want to abort in the middle okay. of the turn. But get really in tight to this right hand okay. shoreline. Aggressively and tighter. Keep okay. the power low though, keep the power down. A little less power. Right there, keep it right there. Okay, a little more power. All right, full left aileron. Full left aileron, okay. I mean, as much aileron as you can get without a little power. Your knee. Yeah. More power. Go ahead and, sh oh, there we go. So we were kind of falling off step and we got back on. You can see the nose tracking across the horizon. That's our wake there. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten out. I'll straighten out of the shoreline, is that okay? Yeah. On this side? Yeah. Okay. So we're kind of halfway falling off step during that turn. Okay, need a little more power then, yeah. right? Yeah, let's go ahead and reduce it and look at, again, at your attack, get it right there, right? 2,000 and don't mess with it until we start the turn. Okay. So we, we were already kind of falling off the step when we started the turn, so it made the whole rest of the turn a little challenging. So get in even tighter onto this left-hand shoreline. Okay. And now, as much right aileron, feeding power in as soon as you start the turn. Good. Not quite as much power though. It's really, really small amounts of power there. Perfect, that's a lot better. Gosh, that feels so weird to me. Yeah. All right, go ahead and straighten out. Get yourself, yeah, back at idle. It's, it's a really weird sensation. They're, they're bizarre. <laughs> Crazy. Right. Yeah. So we're Is that all you want to do or do you want to do I, I want to do some more. Okay. Um, we're kind of still falling off steps. I'm going to have you on the ailerons and on the rudders and I want to be on the throttle. Okay. If you're comfortable with that. That's fine, yeah. All right, so go but ahead I'll, and get I'll us start the, I'll get yeah. us up on step and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 
runway, second rise. Slowly bringing her back, letting her do her thing. Okay, now I'm drawing back the power. Power's coming back. About 2,000 there. I'm gonna Perfect. Get close to the shoreline over here. All right, my throttle. Your throttle. All right, so really now just focus in on getting close to the train over here. Okay. And we're just holding it here, right a hair above 2,000 RPM. Just let me know when you're ready to start. I'm the ready turn. whenever you are. All right, All right, let's, let's go. go ahead. So as soon as we're starting, I'm adding like 50 RPM. Not a ton of power, but just just enough to keep us on step. And the tighter the turn you're making with the rudders, the more power I'm adding. So right here is kind of the max amount of power I'm adding. And even then, it's just about uh, 250 RPM. You're falling off step a little bit right yeah, there. Yeah, falling off step. So okay. we're gonna go add a lot of power. Get it back on step and then reduce it. Okay. I want you just a little bit, not quite as aggressive on the rudder. We've kind of sandwiched the problem here. Okay. So get it back to like a shallower turn on the rudders. Okay. Because if you really try to try to get on the rudders and really get it real tight, you need a lot of power to stay on. And we don't have enough room to do that. All right, go ahead and start your right turn. Perfect, this is shallowed out just a little bit. Keep your body straight up Shallow and down it out a little bit. Right, a little bit more. That's about the rate of turn you want, okay. like that. Right at the edge of where it's starting to be a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. But not like super, I mean, I don't know your comfort level, but for me, this is like, just at the edge of like a bit of discomfort. Good. All right, we're straightening out, reduce the power. But we're starting off to step. Come off yeah. Just a little bit. The whole, most of that turn though, we were pretty much on step. Reviewing this now, I so appreciate Sarah's teaching style as an instructor. She's doing a great job explaining this, and I can tell I'm picking it up little by little, even though I can also see that I'm missing things here and there. It was, it was an issue because you were trying to turn too tight without okay. enough power, so just shallow out the turn. And then max is like 2,300 RPM, so we're not adding okay. a ton of power. I'll do my best for you, Sarah. <laughs> Step turns are the weirdest thing, so. Okay. so. I'm starting. Yep. You reduce the power instead of adding power when you started the turn. Right about there is right, right? Yeah. Maybe a little tighter? This is good. So, yeah, that's good. I know I'm so behind you, the power curve a little bit. So you, you started the turn by reducing the power a little bit. Okay. And then when you added power, you added about 300 RPM. So just okay. real small, like, okay. you should be just continuously feeding in, like, micro amounts of throttle to this turn. You should never add, like, 100 RPM, 200 RPM at okay. a time. It should be just real small, like, continuously feeding it in and making the turn. Just a gentle, you, you want to use the whole way, area of this lake. Okay. If you're not using the whole area of the lake, it probably means you fall off, if you're falling off step. Good. Too much power? A little bit, but this is good right here. A little more rudder? Yeah, no, this is, this is perfect. And then add more power the longer the turn goes on. Good. Much, much better. Beautiful. See that nose just tracking across the horizon? Perfect. And the nose will come up a little bit when we straighten out. Let's do another one just like that. That okay. was beautiful. Reduce the power. The other thing that's going to make your turn radius smaller, right, right above 2,000. Yeah, speed. Yeah, if you enter the right turn, above 2, right above. Okay, yeah. right there. Perfect. That's what it should sound like. Enter the turn too fast, you're going to use up a lot more lake. Right. Oh, go ahead and start your left turn. Aileron, don't forget the aileron. More power, just a little bit as soon as you start the turn. Beautiful. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Shallow the turn out just a little bit. Okay. More power. So straighten out, add a bunch of power, get yourself back on step. When the nose starts to come down, then reduce the power and continue the turn. There, like that. In hindsight, now I can see so much of what she's saying. Sometimes in the heat of the moment as a student, when your head is full of all these new ideas, you just can't hear some of the steps and instructions, no matter how simple. All right, reduce the power. Right above 2,000, perfect. If this next turn, 
goes well, we're gonna take off straight that way. Okay, so once we, we roll out on the step. Yep, once we roll out, we'll go full power. So focus on just a nice shallow turn, try to use up all your lake here. Perfect. I like this rate of turn. We're going through a bunch of wakes mixing up in here, so we're getting some. A little more power. Perfect. Looking really nice. And behind on it a little bit. Very good recovery. Perfect, this is how it should be. You should use up the whole length of the lake of this lake we're on right now. And power all the way forward, yep. right? Full power, find your takeoff attitude. It's gonna be a bit nose higher than perfect, just like that. You can pop a little bit of extra flap in. Keep the nose up, perfect. Since the, since the yoke's not on perfectly straight, that's why the right way in it tends to dip. Yeah. After you lift off a little bit. Early? What? Wait, what did you say? So because the ailerons aren't perfectly like oh, okay. straight with the yoke, if you have the if, the if you have the yoke level, the right wing is gonna dip when you first get off the water. Gotcha. So perfectly level is like this, you right, know, like how right. you have it right now. But that's why that keeps happening, just so you know, it's not what you're doing, it's just the controls. Now we're coming back for another to see if I can put it all together and as you'll see it doesn't go that well. Okay, so gas. Uh, water rudder is up. Make sure it's where you like it. Car P, 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000. Uh, flaps, first notch, right at 80, looking good there. Is this tight enough? Yeah, this is good. Okay. So yeah, don't come in crazy high, but just high enough so that you're not okay. worried about... I'll just leave a little more power than I'm used to then. Cool. Okay, left base, looking for traffic. Gonna keep it coming around. Okay. I like, kind of like my current power setting just to do what you said, and I'll fly yeah. it down. Okay. And then I'll transition. All right. You like this? Yep. Okay. I'm not gonna change anything else. Okay. I will straighten up a little bit more toward our landing path. Okay. Go ahead and start your transition right okay. about here. And landing attitude. Right there. Power. Right there. Right about there. A little less power. A little less, okay. A little less. We've got a real slight tailwind right now. I feel like we're too high. Alright, let's go ahead and go around. Let's go around. say that too? What? That we were too high? Yeah, we were a little bit too high. And we had a slight tailwind. Okay, so, so can you talk to me about about when you want me to transition? Because yeah. I felt like I was still going to wait longer. Yeah, so, so I was going to talk about that. So the whole point of your last visual reference is that's the point where any point after that you could touch down and be safe. We're going to come back around and, and land the other direction this time, going oh, okay. through this little channel right here. Okay. So. There's not like a set point of when you start, but you just gotta be set and established, nose up with the power set where you want it to be by the time you're crossing that last visual. Oh, reference. okay. So yeah. that's, that's what I need. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And now we gotta get down through that channel, otherwise we'll be too high. Okay, you want me to be low through the channel? Yeah. Not, okay. not like crazy low, but you know, but tree, tree top. height. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've been bringing the nose up a little bit too high and then overcompensating okay. with a little bit too much power. So go ahead, right about here, let's start the transition. So back to idle, wait for the ballooning to go away, nose up. And then feed the power in after the sink just kind of barely starts. This is good, because I wanted you to just kind of like see this approach. Just be patient, hold this the whole way down. So that's a good, good power setting? A little bit more. That's kind of what I feel. Right about that, yeah. That's what it should be like. It should feel like you're just barely, you know, barely, barely sinking. That's a perfect power setting. And just hold it all the way down. Oh, that little, the wind kind of. <laughs> I'm going to 
good transition. All right, perfect. Better? Better. Okay, I think something that helped me that time is when I reduced the power to wait to bring the nose up until the float was over. Yeah. And that little key piece of information you told me was really helpful. Okay, good. Now we'll go directly into takeoff again after a step turn. First rise. We're gonna do a turn to the right, correct? Yep. Second rise, relaxing. Go ahead, reduce that power. Perfect, yep, right there. If you feel the nose coming up a little bit, um, maybe just a hair more power, just barely any. Perfect, then straighten this right turn, more power as soon as the turn starts. It's not a ton of power, but just as soon as it starts, it needs a bit more power. Very nice, this is looking really good. Keep feeding in just that little bit of power through the turn. Very, very nice. Beautiful. Yeah, I know how to fly, just kidding. <laughs> I was losing it a little bit there. Okay, full power, yep. takeoff attitude, which is a little bit more nose up. Aligned with my longest uh, waterway, reaching down for flaps. I feel it's about to. Oh, it just took off by itself. Never mind. <laughs> and aiming for that little spot, getting up to 80. Very, very nice. That was a really good step turn. Cool, thanks. Done for this lesson, but this is only the first flight of the day and the first flight of several days where I'll be flying to get my seaplane reading. And dang, I learned a lot. It was just such a blast to be out here finally working on this after all these years. Then you're gonna give it full left right about here. Between lessons and just hanging around Alaska floats in Talkeetna, everyone mingles and makes friends along the way. The weather and company couldn't be better and as an aviator, it's great to be back learning again. So make sure to keep following along on this series of lessons. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see the other lessons and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else. And until next time, throttle on.